Hello, everybody. My name is Zbigniew Malinowski, and in this short presentation, I will outline potentials of 3D radiative transfer modeling in plant phenotyping. The state of the art in remote sensing phenotyping involves a collection of different data on uh, canopies or individual plants from different platforms, field or indoor, tower, drone, airborne, as well as spaceborne platforms can be used to collect uh, big data, which are in turn used to train some machine learning algorithm. And this one is then applied on a real observations for uh, getting information on a phenotype. Although this is very efficient uh, processing chain or approach, it requires a quite robust knowledge base. Uh, the machine learning algorithms are very efficient, but they can only interpret uh, the situations they were uh, trained for. Therefore, we need a very robust training data set. We as well need to know what type of input data are required to get to the certain information on the plant phenotype. And finally, uh, we need to know what technical specifications should be used for the sensors delivering this big data. Here at this point, we can use 3D radiative transfer modeling as a simulator or virtual machine for producing uh, virtual remote sensing data. These models use as a energy source, direct sun illumination or emissions from atmosphere or from a landscape, uh, means the geothermal emissions or the extraterrestrial one or as well soil induced chlorophyll fluorescence. Their main purpose is to simulate interaction of the electromagnetic radiation with objects on the earth or within the atmosphere. They simulate single and multiple scattering and absorption processes. And then finally, they couple those two systems, earth and atmosphere together to produce observations at the sensor level, either above the atmosphere, within the atmosphere, or below the atmosphere. Nowadays, there is uh, many radiation transfer models based on the modern Monte Carlo rendering algorithms. I'm myself involved in development of DART model, uh, abbreviated uh, discrete anisotropic radiative transfer, which is based on a uh, look score render uh, algorithm. How does a DART work? So first we need a 3D objects of our plant of interest or tree of interest uh, or any other object. We can as well use a digital elevation model beneath that 3D object. We require optical and temperature properties of any single surface within the simulated scene. And if we want to involve atmosphere, we need information on gases, aerosol, water vapor, and possibly cloud occurrence in some of the atmosphere. How does it work? We first set up in the DART irradiation direction and as well as uh, viewing directions. Uh, then the DART will compute from optical properties and these viewing angles the fast function for any uh, surface within the 3D. Uh, scene which we want to simulate. We have to set up such a scene. That means uh, place the 3D objects of individual plants, set up the leaf density, leaf angle distribution, etc. And then the DART will propagate uh, electromagnetic waves, uh, either originating from sun or other uh, sources through this scene landscape. And it will produce spectral imagery can be hyperspectral, multispectral, any other type, uh, bidirectional reflectance factor or a directional brightness temperature, a radiative budget of any flux which we simulate, as well as laser-based LiDAR signals and much more. I prepared two examples of the optical signals that can be simulated with DART for this very simple system of 20 mice plants viewed by the sensor from the nadir uh, viewing angle. 
and the optical signals are simulated as a function of leaf chlorophyll content. We increase leaf chlorophyll content from 10 to 100 micrograms, and we can simulate this uh, bidirectional reflectance function between 400 and 850 nanometers. You see that with the increase in chlorophyll content, the absorption of chlorophyll is decreasing the reflection further down in a visible and uh, red edge wavelengths. You can as well see small spike at uh, 740 nanometers, which is a chlorophyll fluorescence. We can separate this and simulate the chlorophyll fluorescence in DART as a unique signal. And again, this is the simulation as a function of chlorophyll content. With more chlorophyll content, the plants produce more chlorophyll fluorescence. A part of this uh, numeric output, we can as well uh, simulate in the art uh, imaging outputs. And I prepared uh, the, let's say, most common near infrared uh, reflectance image that you could obtain from uh, airborne satellite or drone uh, platform. You see, we can reproduce very genuinely the distribution of shadows, as well as the in actual sunlit shaded leaves and so on. And a part of the reflectance, we can as well simulate fluorophyll fluorescence. This is at the 740 nanometers in the diurnal course from the sunset, uh, sunrise to the sunset. And you see we can uh, produce where the signal uh, originates from and as well the where the impact of shadows on that individual leaf signal is. To conclude, I would like to stress out potentials of the radiative transfer modeling that can be provided for a number of phenotyping purposes. First of all, we can use this modeling for uh, creating databases or lookup tables of forward simulations of any plant or leaf optical measurements. These databases can be used for inversion uh, of the actual laboratory or field observations, as well as for sensitivity analysis, identifying key parameters of this simulated system or data. Uh, we can produce simulations of experiments that are non-reproducible by laboratory or field trials, so they can only be done virtually. We can provide full 3D radiative budget of any electromagnetic signal, uh, we can optimize the sensor and platform technical specifications and much more. Thank you for your attention.